According to zoologists and wildlife biologists, when they've studied the behaviors and characteristics of wolves, they found that wolves are opportunistic predators. They will eat when they have the opportunity to do so. They've also found that wolves tend to target weak, sick, or young sheep as they are easier to catch and kill. And lastly, the presence of wolves in areas with sheep can lead to significant economic losses for sheep farmers, as sheep that are killed by wolves cannot be sold for meat or wool. So three things to take note of. Wolves are opportunistic predators. Wolves target the vulnerable, the weak, and the young. And wolves bring loss. Now, is it not interesting that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, we are warned against false prophets who appear to be sheep, but are inwardly ravenous wolves. In other words, as children of God, we are being warned to be wary of false prophets who appear to be good and righteous, but are actually deceivers. And so these false prophets obviously have three characteristics. They're opportunistic predators who are looking for the Christian who will give them an ear or a seat at their table. Remember that the Bible says give no room to the devil. And I believe this is because the devil and all those under his influence are opportunistic predators. They're just waiting for the slightest opportunity and they will enter someone's life to wreak havoc. Secondly, false prophets target the vulnerable. This, I believe, is the person who is tired and weak from whatever they are going through in life. They target someone who is frustrated or on the edge of giving up. And look at it this way. The devil tempted Jesus after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. When he was at his weakest physically, that's when the devil tempted Jesus. Look at Job. After he lost everything, his family and his wealth, and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse for him, the devil finally came after his health and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. When this happened, Job's wife did a despicable thing and encouraged Job to do the exact thing that Satan wanted. And that was for Job to curse God and die. So you see, the devil loves to attack you at your lowest or at your weakest. And this is the template that all false prophets will use. When you're at your lowest and at your weakest, they'll tell you things that will tickle your ears. They'll offer you a word that has no Jesus, no repentance, but only the feel-good factor. This is how the devil's henchmen operate. Now, the final thing that wolves do is bring destruction and loss. And what does the Bible say concerning this? John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Wherever the devil is, there will be destruction. He comes to steal people's joy, to steal people's time, so that they'll be distracted with everything but the things of God. And false prophets will employ the same strategy. So you may be wondering, what exactly should I do to make sure I am never deceived by false prophets? How can I remain guarded against wolves in sheep's clothing? Well, the only true way to recognize deception for what it is, is to know the pure truth and who that is. Jesus himself said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Anyone who says otherwise is contradicting the Bible and spreading deception. Now, Jesus also said in John 16, verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. When Jesus died, resurrected, and then went to heaven to be with the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit of God to reside in everyone who would accept and believe in him as Lord and Savior. Our salvation in Jesus Christ is our only hope of not being deceived by the same serpent that lied to Eve in the garden. The Bible explicitly tells us that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and that he has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. The word also teaches us that he was a liar from the beginning and that he is the father of lies. 
The book of Revelation reminds us that because he deceives the world, that he will be thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur with the beast and the false prophet, and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. There is nothing that the devil would like more than to deceive every human being so that they will suffer with him for all eternity. But the word teaches us, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So as children of God, we should sow into the things of the Spirit. We should sow into godly things. We should sow into the truth of the gospel, not the lies of this world. We should turn our ears to the true gospel preached in the Bible, one whereby you pick up your cross and serve Christ. We should turn away from so-called men and women of God who only preach a feel-good gospel, one that only encourages but never convicts, one that only uplifts but never calls for repentance and obedience. Now, the most important thing is that we should be spending our time and energy chasing after the Lord. Because the more we know Him, the more we know truth, and the more we know truth, the more easily we can identify deception. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. And on this topic of trust, when you think about it, we have been conditioned to trust our natural senses. We've been conditioned to trust in science. We're taught to trust information or advice that comes from credible sources that can be verified and fact-checked. But trusting in God? It requires us to go against everything we've been conditioned to do. Trusting in the Lord requires you to ignore what you can see or understand. Trusting in Him means that at times, you can take the doctor's advice, but accept that he or she does not have the final say. I would even go as far as saying trusting in God means ignoring what the news anchor is saying or what the economy is doing. I encourage you to let go. Let go of the need to know. Let go of the need for control. Let go of the whys, the hows, and whens, and simply say, Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That is trusting in the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul.